Andrew Bob Corker looking back at his time in office as he prepares for what's next. He's into his last few weeks as a senator, having decided more than a year ago that he would not be running for re-election. That decision launched a race for Tennessee's next senator, the top contenders, former Governor Phil Bredesen and Representative Marsha Blackburn. On election night, Blackburn came out on top, keeping the Senate seat in Republican hands. Corker, once rumored to be in the running for a spot in President Trump's administration, has at times feuded with the president. A class that's included some name calling. Our top story tonight WATE 6 on your side reporter Blake Stevens sitting down with Corker. Blake joins us here in the studio. So, after traveling to Chattanooga today to meet with the senator, what is on his mind right now as his time in the Senate comes to an end? Well, hey, Kristen. Hey, Lori. The senator's saying he still doesn't know what's next. Right now, he says he's focused on the transition as Marsha Blackburn prepares to take over his seat. The senator also wanting to finish out strong on policy. He's looking at legislation on human trafficking, fighting HIV around the world, and on women's empowerment in Africa. Now, will he be running for president? It's still a possibility. Senator Bob Corker looking back on 12 years as he finishes his political career for now. It's been the greatest privilege of my life to serve in the Senate. In 2007, Corker transitioning from the mayor of Chattanooga to the U.S. Senate. There, he would deal with issues ranging from the war in Iraq to a financial crisis. More recently, the chair of the U.S. Senate Committee on Foreign Relations would deal with a Twitter feud involving the President of the United States. Here's one tweet from President Trump. Isn't it sad that lightweight Senator Bob Corker, who couldn't get reelected in the great state of Tennessee, will now fight tax cuts? And here's a rebuttal from Corker. Same untruths from an utterly untruthful president. Hashtag alert the daycare staff. I wouldn't have anticipated candidly any president using Twitter the way this president uses Twitter. I wouldn't have imagined that any president would use it to, to call people names and demean folks and actually, you know, uh, send out uh, tweets against world leaders, but it's happening and it's the world we live in today. Although he says he's strongly supported some of the president's policies, he still thinks there's work left to do. I think the, the president still has some, uh, some growth uh, that needs to take place. And I think, I don't know that this is a capability or not, but I think um, learning to, to address and appeal to the better angels of our nation and trying to pull people together uh, to solve problems to me would be uh, one of those areas. Corker saying he ran on the fiscal issue facing our nation, but he says he hasn't seen much of an appetite for fixing the problem. So if there were a Corker presidential run, I should expect to hear something about getting our fiscal house in order. I would think anybody who's uh, going to look at running for that office and be taken seriously um, uh, would have to address that issue. Corker leaving the Senate on an optimistic note. We have the greatest country on earth, and um, in spite of what may be said about uh, you know people around the world right now, we're still that shining city on the hill. And hey, I just want to add, Corker complimented the president on the economy and on his two Supreme Court appointments. He also acknowledges some foreign policy wins from the president, like in the fight against ISIS. But he says he's concerned that we're ripping apart alliances with other countries just for the sake of ripping them apart. That, he believes, is not helpful to our country. Guys. All right, Blake, thank you so much. Corker also chiming in on the president's criticism of the media. He says attacking the media by calling them the enemy of the people is, quote, incredibly destructive to our country.